flash floods in Texas. Glacial lake bursts in Nepal. Monsoon chaos in Pakistan. Cities underwater. Homes washed away. Floods are everywhere. But why now? And why so many? A flood happens when water overwhelms land that's usually dry. It can come from heavy rains, overflowing rivers, storm surges, or even melting glaciers. There are several types. Riverine floods. Slow and large scale, flash floods. Sudden, fast, coastal floods. Driven by storms and sea rise. Glacial floods. Caused by melting ice or dam bursts. Floods can last minutes or weeks, but their aftermath, disease outbreaks, economic loss, food insecurity, can last for years. Floods aren't new, but the frequency, intensity, and damage are increasing. Why? 1. Climate change. Warmer air holds more moisture, leading to extreme rainfall. 2. Urbanization. Cities with concrete surfaces can't absorb rainwater, overwhelming drainage. 3. Deforestation. Fewer trees mean less water absorption and faster runoff. 4. Poor planning. Many towns are built on floodplains without adequate protection. 5. Melting glaciers. Glacial lakes can burst, causing sudden floods downstream. In the last decade, global flood-related disasters have doubled. Climate models predict more intense rainfall events across Asia, Europe, and the Americas in the coming decades. Let's look at recent examples. Texas, USA, Kerr County. Floods killed over 120 people. Campgrounds were swept away. Pakistan, monsoon rains and glacier melt affected thousands, killed 79 plus. Nepal, a glacial lake outburst triggered deadly flash floods near the China border. China, central provinces hit by flooding and landslides from prolonged rainfall. These disasters reveal a trend. Areas with weak infrastructure and vulnerable populations suffer the most. Floods may be inevitable, but their devastation doesn't have to be. Here's what helps. Green infrastructure. Parks, wetlands, and permeable pavements reduce runoff. Early warning systems. Tech can save lives with timely alerts. Better urban planning. Stop building in high-risk zones. River restoration. Natural flow reduces overflow pressure. Climate action. Reducing emissions helps stabilize weather extremes. Additionally, governments must enforce building codes and improve floodplain zoning. Community-based flood education can also build resilience at the local level. As sea levels rise and the hydrological cycle intensifies, floods will continue to test our cities and systems. Coastal megacities like Jakarta, New York, and Dhaka are especially vulnerable, but adaptation is still possible if action starts today. Floods tell us something critical. We're not separate from nature. We live within its boundaries. Preparing for floods means preparing for a future we can live in. Floods are growing deadlier, but they're not just a force of nature. They're a wake-up call. As our planet warms and cities expand, we must act fast to adapt and protect. Because the next flood might hit closer to home. This is Earth in 5. Subscribe for more deep dives into the planet we share.